you're tuned to More Living with Jim Brogan, broadcasted live from the Brogan Financial Studios at News Talk 98.7, where old-fashioned values, expert knowledge, and genuine understanding come together to give you the retirement straight talk you deserve. Jim's a former National Advisor of the Year recipient and a financial educator, and he's here today to talk about how you can live out the best years of your life. Jim and the Brogan Financial Team have been helping retirees and pre-retirees across the Southeast for almost 20 years in their pursuit of financial independence. You can reach them during the week at 865-862-6800. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn, folks, because more living with Jim Brogan starts now. Good Saturday, East Tennessee, and welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. This is News Talk 98.7 WOKI, and you know, I think our physical health uh, is about the most important thing we can take care of ourselves, uh, the things things we can do. Um, you know, I talk certainly a lot about financial health on this show, and we talk about a lot of issues, but you know what? Um, if we lose our health, we just can't enjoy life the way that we want to. And you know, uh, February is National Heart Month, and uh, so we're going to talk about our health today. Uh, we're going to talk about he- heart health. We're going to talk about fitness routines, well-balanced diet, and how they all lead to a better quality and healthier life. You know, many Americans continually look for ways to shed those extra pounds, incorporate more healthy food like fruits and vegetables, and get our exercise and get our bodies moving. Now, for many of us, including me, maintaining a fitness routine in the middle of the pandemic has been a challenge, and whether it was gyms that were closed or a lack of motivation, we're not moving as much, we're not getting, you know, people are working from home, so they're just not getting out and about as much. You know, I have found that a regular fitness routine has been pretty tough to maintain, and eating better is doable, but when we're stuck at home, you know, motivation to stick to a healthy diet can really be difficult. So today, first, I'm very excited to have a co-host with me. Jill Wolverton is uh, with us. She is uh, my director of marketing and communications at Brogan Financial, and she helps produce this show every weekend. She's also an avid runner, and she's really kind of our in-house healthy eating guru, at Brogan Financial. We have her in charge of our fitness. We have a fitness committee, health and fitness committee, and we do things every month, and she's always in charge of that. So I thought it would be great to have her input today. Good morning, Jill. Welcome to More Living. Good morning. I'm excited to be on this side of the radio today. I know. You're always doing everything behind the the scenes. It's great to have you (laughs) on with us. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, we are too. So my our first guest today is Andrew Henderson with Fitness Together. You know, he's been on him many times over the years. He's It's not only a place I work out, uh, and he's made a difference in my life. Uh, he's become a good friend. And uh, we're, we're excited to have him on with us. So without further ado, good morning, Andrew. Welcome to More Living. Good morning, Jim. Oh, it's so great to have you back. How, how are you doing? This, I'm doing uh, great. We've kicked off 2021. How's 2021 going for you? 2021 has been great, Jim. Um, you know, it's really good to see people even driving in today on North Shore, driving by, I think, Carl Callum Park. There's probably six or seven people outside walking around in the rain just to get exercise. So I think people are finally getting the hint that, uh, you know, they can they can only use COVID as an excuse for so long. Eventually, they've got to <laughs> do something. And, and we're getting new people started every day in fitness routine. So that's exciting to see people finally coming out of their shells and getting ready to, uh, to get after it again. I think that's great, and I think too. You know, it's been a pretty cold February, and I think with the with the weather, even though it is wet outside, the fact that it's been warmer, I think people have been. I think people are really ready for spring. Absolutely. Andrew, let's let's start off about diet. You know, yeah. I found that seventy, eighty percent of how we look and feel is what we eat, and that doesn't mean fitness isn't important too, because it is, but. It's, you know, it's, it's the fuel we put in our body, and it seems like there are thousands of different weight loss diets out there. Some are quick fixes, cleanses, detox diets, and some are longer-term lifestyles. And, you know, I thought for, for me, you know, many of you listening you know my story. I've been on a journey of health, and I yo-yo a little bit with my weight, but I am down about still about 50 or 60 pounds from where I was about 10 or 12 years ago. Many thanks to Andrew Henderson. 
But what about you? In terms of uh, choosing the best food program, Andrew, there's so much conflicting advice out there. What do you say? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I've been trying to get caught up to date with nutrition, especially in regards to heart health uh, for this month, and, and also with uh, um, mental health, and including things like Alzheimer's. My dad had Alzheimer's, so I'm becoming more and more interested in, in how to minimize my risk for that. And I keep coming back to the same handful of things, Jim, and certain principles that I think make the most sense, and, and that is to probably – cut back on the amount of meat that we're eating, especially red meat and, and oh, other. Man. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> um, to get more, fr- to get more fruits and vegetables to avoid um, saturated fats and, and look more towards things like olive oil and, and healthy unsaturated fats, um, higher fibers and, and really to eat whole foods versus processed foods. Um, so I, I think if people can just follow those basic principles and even make small improvements in those areas, they will certainly cut down their risk for all sorts of uh, disease and, and uh, over, being overweight and whatnot. So what about like elimination diets like keto and Whole30 where you're eliminating like a whole food group? Are there some concerns um, or long-term effects that come along with doing something like that? Um, I think my main concern for any diet that completely eliminates food groups is that most people aren't able to stay on that. <laughs> And so the, 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 that way of eating only works as long as you're eliminating the food. Uh, for 90% of the people we work with, they've already tried those plans, um, and they worked while they were on them, and then as soon as they, they caved and they went back to eating carbohydrates, they, they put the weight back on again. So I don't recommend things that you cannot sustain for a lifetime. And for most of those more extreme elimination diets, they're not sustainable forever, and so I recommend people put their energy towards finding a more healthy, moderate, balanced way of eating and and moving more uh, versus um, doing something that they can only do for a few weeks or a month. Right. I've I've had a been doing an elimination diet, um, and that's been a little tough when Girl Scout cookies rolled around in the last month. So I can see where that would be really tough to eliminate carbohydrates altogether or um, dairy. You know, that's pretty tough for everybody. Yeah, I think what you need to do is to look at the quality of the carbohydrates you're eating, but the quality of the fats, the quality of the protein, and, and take that next step and not just use blanket statements like carbohydrates are bad or fats are bad. Um, instead, try to find that balance where you're, you're making better choices, uh, eating carbohydrates that are uh, lower on the glycemic index that don't convert to sugar as quickly, uh, that have higher fiber, and you use them in, in moderation in a balanced approach. You know, you can sit down and eat a box. You can sit down and eat a box of wheat thins, and then, yeah, well, that's a bad carbohydrate because it's processed and coated in oil. Um, you know, versus eating, you know, a, a meal with, um, you know, a sweet potato or, or legumes or beans that have healthy carbohydrates and higher fiber. So, I, I think we need to take that next step and really be more critical of, of the quality and the and the quantity of what we're eating too. Andrew, talk about the importance of writing things down. And having some, I guess, some of it's writing down so we really see what's going on. And then there's also benefits to accountability if you have somebody that's looking at that. But, you know, I'm kind of bad about writing down what I'm eating. But when I do, I've found that it really helps just to see what is on paper at the end of the week. You know, I think we can um, we can get into something called mindless eating. Maybe it's, um, you know, while we're watching TV or, or working from home. But anyway, it's basically... And by writing it down or keeping some sort of a food journal, you're, you're heightening your awareness, you're being more aware of what you're doing. And that, for many people, is the first step of just realizing what they're doing and how much they're doing it. So uh, if you're able to do that, I think that's great. I don't think writing your food down every day for the rest of your life is necessarily sustainable. But I think it can be very helpful if you can do it for even just three to seven days just to make yourself more aware of some bad habits that you might be falling into and also to really be aware of, of the portions that you're eating. And I think that's where a lot of people, they underestimate how much they eat and they overestimate how much they exercise. So by journaling both your exercise and your food intake for a week, you can really get a, a better grasp on reality. We're visiting with Andrew Henderson of Fitness Together. 
and a good friend uh, here on More Living, and we're talking about health and fitness. A little bit later in the show, we're going to have on the American Heart Association. When we come back, as we visit with Andrew, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we really can start incorporating healthy living into our day-to-day lives. You know, what does that mean from the fitness side, and what does that mean from the nutrition side? So do stay with us. I've got Jill Wolverton here from Brogan Financial that is helping me guest host today. So please stay tuned. You're listening to More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. Welcome back to More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm your host, Jim Brogan. I'm excited to have Jill Wolverton with me today. She is my director of communications and marketing at Brogan Financial and also produces the radio show every week. She's an avid runner and kind of our resident go-to person for all things health and fitness. So as we talk more about healthy lifestyle. I thought it would be great to have her with us. Uh, And then we've also got Andrew Henderson, good friend of mine. I've known Andrew for about 14 years now, and uh, he's the owner of Fitness Together. Uh, Andrew, talk a little bit about the routines that we have today with, you know, many people are still kind of working from home. Some are working from home and the office. It's just kind of a chaotic thing. Um, people are still many are nervous about going to gyms. How do you how do you think you need you know what's the your best advice for incorporating movement into our lives and the importance of movement? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is just to recognize that um, you know we don't want to sacrifice our health in order to stay healthy. <laughs> if that makes sense, that's so. Oh, I understand people's concern about, you know, going out to public and maybe returning back to their gyms or health clubs. I also think that people are putting on weight at a, at a rate I've never seen before over this past year and actually, you know, making things worse for themselves out of fear of COVID. So, um, hey, let's make sure we're really thinking clearly about this. Uh, you know, 98 and a half percent of the people who get COVID uh, come out just fine. And, and I think with vaccinations, we should start to see things open up again. Uh, more importantly, though, uh, if you are in high risk category, uh, you need to keep moving even more, right? If you are older, if you are overweight, if you do have high blood pressure or respiratory issues, start with your mindset, and that is that um, you're high risk, and you need to exercise and eat healthy to, to help reduce your risk, not just from COVID, but from heart disease, uh, cancer, uh, and, and all sorts of other things. And in terms of working in exercise, I think. Uh, Something that people get confused is that they think they have to exercise for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes at a time. But really, you know, the Mayo Clinic suggests that we just try to get 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity a week. Um, so that would be, you know, 30 minutes, five days a week. Uh, and that would include just going out in your neighborhood for a walk, like those people walking in the rain today, right? Or um, 75 minutes of more vigorous aerobic activity a week. So if you step up your intensity a little bit, you don't have to do it quite as long. Um, so if, if you can figure out a way to do three higher intensity, 25 minute sessions, well, you got that box checked. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, strength training is really important, especially as we age, because that's what keeps our, our, our joints strong, it keeps our muscles strong, it keeps our metabolism revving, it allows us to move better, allows us to do things without injury. Uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be simple body weight exercises like planks, push-ups, sit-ups, uh, push-ups, things that don't require any equipment. And so, you know, first thing is let, let's not, you know, let's not make excuses because that doesn't change anything. Second, uh, second of all is keep, keep your goals moderate and understand that, you know, right now maintenance is probably the best thing that you can shoot for if you're not able to get into your normal gym routine. So um, I noticed a little uh, advertising dollars spent over the winter months and even into this month on, you know, Nordic Track, Peloton, um, all these home yep. gym equipment pieces that are really expensive. Um, smart gyms with technology like Mirror and Tonal, are these items really worth that price tag? I mean, they're thousands of dollars a piece. So. Yeah, you, uh, and, and it all, the, answer, the, answer, the answer is that it depends if you use it or not. 
it, it's funny because I've been looking at getting a Peloton myself because I'm a mountain biker and, and, and like to have workouts to do um, when the weather's bad. And they're about $2,000. What I've noticed, though, is there's a lot of them coming up on the Facebook marketplace because people bought them and now they're selling them. Um, so if you are in the market for that, uh, look for a good used one because you'll save a lot of money. Um, I, I think some of the aspects of the more interactive fitness uh, equipment for the home I do like, right? You actually have live interaction with a coach or with uh, other people in that group. So I think it is more motivating than just getting on the treadmill and, and watching TV. Um, well, and I'll add, but, you know, it, there are, with some of the apps you can get on your smart TVs, I mean, there's a lot of, yeah. not much money, I mean, nine bucks a month, you can be a member of some of these things, and they've got great routines you can do, you know, through the t- through the smart TV, right? I mean, there's other ways to do it without spending a ton of money. Absolutely, yeah, you, you can certainly do that, you know, you can go to YouTube and, and get, a, you know, a, a year's worth of free workouts just by uh, you looking for the sort of thing you're looking at. There's a lot of free content um, that don't require expensive equipment at all. I'd say it really boils down to your commitment and your motivation, right? So, um don't use the don't don't count on the equipment to motivate you. You have to be the one that gets on the equipment, and it won't do the work for you. But if you are ready to do the work and you're looking to add in a little variety, some of those home based technology programs can be really cool. Um, uh, but just make sure that your intentions are right, and you're not just looking to buy your way uh, into shape because money doesn't do it. You've got to actually do the work. Now, what about like increasing your fitness? So you might have not worked out in years and you used to be a great athlete and how, how do you go about, um, setting realistic goals? Um, you know, so you don't have injury or, um, really aren't putting too much strain on your body. Are you trying to add a mile a week, add five extra pounds? What are some realistic fitness goals for, for those who are restarting a fitness routine? Yeah. So, you know, if you're able to, I always recommend that you, especially if it's been a while and maybe you have some injuries or things that you're you're concerned about is when you're able to meet with a fitness professional or a physical therapist for an initial screening and evaluation, um, that will help you avoid making costly mistakes like doing exercises that could potentially hurt you. Um, I always recommend starting light. So it, it, what we do at Fitness Together is for new clients, we start them in more of an endurance and stabilization phase. So for the first six weeks, we just work on getting their core strong, basic exercises like planks and anti-rotations. We use lighter weights, higher repetitions, uh, just to get the joints and the muscles working again. Um, so I would recommend easing in for the first month and then gradually progressing by increasing your weight loads of, you know, maybe 5% a week maximum, uh, increasing your mileage maybe a mile a week if you're walking or running, but just gradually increase. Um but then don't do the same thing again and again and again and create risk for overuse. So you know, every four to six weeks, we recommend changing up the routine so you're working different muscles, different right. exercises, and not continually doing the same thing and wearing your body down. Well, and Andrew, I know that uh, one thing I believe in that I know you you preach a lot is functional fitness, right? And you've kind of touched on that in, in doing things in your fitness routine that really help you be more functional in life. Uh, can yeah. you talk a little bit about that and also how stretching plays a part of that? I know as, especially men as we age, we just – flexibility is so poor in most men, and I'm guilty as charged. But talk about mm-hmm. the importance of stretching in functional fitness. Yeah, so functional fitness in general is really just a, a mindset that, that exercise should be able to uh, have good um, application in your daily activity. So if it's to get ready for a ski trip. Uh, then the exercises should you know, mimic the movements of skiing. If you're a cyclist, then those exercises should uh, help you maintain good posture even though you're hunched over your handlebars for three hours at a time. Uh, if you're doing gardening, then those exercises should allow you to bend over, uh, lift, and stand back up without using your back. So you know, by analyzing what the daily uh, movements that you're looking to improve are, then the exercise choice we make can be uh, more appropriate for you. Um, when it comes to flexibility, um, You know, there's a couple different kinds of flexibility. At the beginning of your workout, we recommend dynamic flexibility, maybe swinging your legs back and forth or swinging your arms to help warm up the joints. At the end of the session, we recommend more static flexibility. That would be the typical hamstring stretch, lying on your ground, laying on the ground and pulling your foot or uh, standing up and and doing a quad stretch. Uh, We do that for a particular reason, too. 
Um, but flexibility in, in the body's function work hand in hand. You know, for example, if you're bending over to lift up something out of your trunk or off the ground, but your hamstrings are too tight, then your lower back will start to round. If that's a heavy object, you're at a greater risk of, of hurting your lower back because your hamstrings were too tight. Um, and so eventually those, those tightnesses can catch up with you and, and create injury. Um, so you know, the exercises you choose, though, should, should be safe so that you don't create that risk until your muscles are flexible enough to perform the movement properly. Andrew Henderson, owner of Fitness Together. There's four locations here in Knoxville. It's certainly uh, very, you know, it's 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 nice having a semi-private place to work out. You know, it's funny. We were talking, Andrew, uh, earlier about home equipment and whether you're going to use it. You know, that was what started my journey years ago, back in like, I think 2007 maybe, when I first came into Fitness Together. I think I had, I really need to lose some weight. I had lost some, but I was still mm-hmm. really needed to lose weight. And I had purchased a piece of home equipment, one of those kind of universal weight machines. And I I just wasn't using it. And I gave myself 90 days. And I said, if I don't start using this equipment, I'm going to have some accountability and I'm going to have to do something else and and start getting on a road to health. So um, I just want to kind of share, share that little story. But how can people find out more about what you all do at Fitness Together and learn more about how you may could help them uh, get their fitness and nutrition going. Yeah, there, there's two ways they can do that, Jim. Uh, they can visit us at knoxft.com. That's uh, K-N-O-X-F-T.com. Or they can call or text me personally at 273-0380. Okay, that's knoxft.com. Andrew Henderson, mm-hmm. Fitness Together, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thanks, Jim. It's good to uh, hear your voice as always. Absolutely. It's Thanks, always Andrew. good to talk to you. You bet. So tell you You'll what, we great, come great have a great weekend and I will I will talk to you later. Bye, that sounds great. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Bye. Now in our next segment, we're gonna have Beverly Miller on from the American Heart Association and we're gonna talk about heart health and some of the great programs and initiatives that they work on. As we continue, we've got Jill Wolverton in, in with us today. She's helping me guest host. She's my producer, also is our director of marketing over at Rogan Financial and kind of our in-house guru on all things health and fitness related. So stay with us. We've got a lot of great things. We'll also have financial health in the last segment. You'll want to stay tuned for that. You're listening to More Living with Jim Brogan here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. Thanks for tuning in. This is More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. We're on every Saturday at both 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So if you, you know, if you don't catch the whole show, you can listen again at 3. We also podcast all of our shows online. You can go to broganfinancial.com and click on radio, and you can hear all of our shows as well as our dollars and cents segments. Now, I do want to mention I've got Pellissippi State is having their their next class, Thrive Financially in Retirement, this Tuesday. So it's March the 2nd and the 9th. It's two two-hour sessions. And in that class, I call I cover all seven key areas you need to address in your financial planning. If you go to PellissippiRetirementPlanning.com, you can get more information. It's at the Hardin Valley location, and it's 6.30 to 8.30 both evenings. You can either attend virtually via Zoom or in person in the classroom. They do require masks, and you have to just answer a survey, and they're you know, they are, they're implementing guidelines to make sure we're all safe in how we do that. So again, go to, go to PellissippiRetirementPlanning.com to find out all of our educational events uh, and all the, the, the information we put out. You can go to BroganFinancial.com. Now, I'm thrilled to have Bev Miller with us. She is from the American Heart Association. Of course, February is Heart Health Month. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the great programs and initiatives that they work on. Uh, good morning, Bev. Welcome to More Living. Good morning, Jim. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for being with us. February is, as I said, February is American Heart Month. So can you just walk through, like, what is the primary mission of the American Heart Association? 
Yeah. So our mission um, is to be a relentless force of a world of longer, healthier lives. So it's gotten broader over the last four years ago. We put out a new mission statement that's gotten broader. So more than just cardiac health, we're just really working to improve the health of all Americans um, and ensure folks are trying to live healthier lifestyles. Can you talk to us a little bit, Bev, about symptoms of if somebody may be having a, a heart event? Absolutely. So some of the classic symptoms of a, a heart attack symptoms would be chest discomfort um, in the center of the chest, typically lasts more than a few minutes, um, could go away and come back, could just feel like an uncomfortable pressure, squeezing, or, or you know, like a fullness of pain in your chest. There could be discomfort in other areas of the upper body, so you should look for, you know, pain or discomfort in one of your arms, the back, neck, even your jaw or stomach could be included in that. Um, a shortness of breath is a big one. And then some other symptoms could include maybe breaking out in a cold sweat, being nauseous, or lightheaded. So really anything that's highly unusual that you notice, I mean, we need to be in tune to our own bodies. I know, Jill, you and I talk a lot about that, at just right. being very in tune to what's going on. You know, I know that many people, Bev, are always surprised to hear that not only is cardiovascular disease the number one killer in America for men, it is also the number one killer for women. And, you know, I know that, uh, you know, I mean, I'm no doctor, but I do know from what I understand, symptoms can manifest themselves in different ways for women. Can you just touch on that a little bit? So you're right. And I love that you asked that question. Thanks for bringing that up. So most men, most women are very surprised to know that it's their number one killer. And in fact, it kills all, uh, it kills more women than all forms of cancer combined, to put that in perspective. Oh, wow. I didn't it, know it was that high. Yeah, it's, it's so much higher. And so we actually do have a platform that we that is named Go Red for Women. Um, it's in its 17th year, and it just truly focuses on getting women to know their numbers, to be in tune with their health. And just as you alluded to differently, yes, the signs and symptoms can present differently in women. And, you know, women are classically known for taking care of everyone else everyone else but ourselves at times, you know, taking care of families and, and loved ones. And so um, a lot of times they overlook it. Sometimes it could just be that you seem stressed. Sometimes you're overly tired. Uh, things that we would just, you know, say that you write them off. <laughs> yeah, you, know, yeah, you just write it off. And, and, and we yeah. need to stop doing that because we need to make sure we are at least going for our annual checkup, that we know that our cholesterol levels are okay and our blood pressure is okay and so that we're not falling victim to this. So the Go Red for Women, um, that's an educational platform. What are some of the things that you do to help educate women about heart health with Go Red? Yeah, we actually do things. Uh, we have four pillars of work that fall under that Go Red for Women platform. You know, broadly, those are ensuring all women are aware. They're aware of these signs and symptoms. It's helping women to take charge of their health. It's also closing the gender gaps in research and STEM education. And then um, addressing the inequities in access and quality of care that women receive. Now here wow, locally we great. have, yeah, and, and then here locally, I'll speak to that for a minute. We, um, it's a 365-day campaign. Uh, it culminates typically with a luncheon celebration that takes place in May. And so we um, are proud to work with Tenova and a lot of our other area hospitals who helped to get this messaging out for us in the Knoxville community. That's great. You just mentioned the luncheon. I know that uh, American Heart Association is known for your heart ball, which you guys just had this past week. Um, and I'm sure that events like this are so important in bringing not only awareness, but helping raise funds for nonprofits like yours. How has the pandemic really impacted your ability to educate and fundraise and bring awareness to not only Go Red, but the American Heart Association? Well, it's been an interesting year, as it has been for all of us. You know, sure. we just had to quickly, yeah, we had to, we had to quickly pivot and and figure this out. You know, you just mentioned Heartball for the first time ever. We had a a virtual Heartball on Thursday evening of this week, so that was really different. And then, as far as uh, Go Red for Women, it will be digital as well for the second year in a row. So we've had to go, we've had to go virtual, as the, as the rest of the world has on many right. platforms. <laughs> 
Zoom meetings. We've had some um, what we call community conversations that were led by some area physicians on a Zoom platform over a lunch and learn type time frame where we just re- really shared the symptoms and have done our best to still get the word out in the community in an odd year for all of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bev, um, let, let's quickly talk about strokes as well. You know, strokes are the third leading cause of death in the U.S. behind heart disease and cancer. And my understanding, one in four adults can expect to have a stroke in their lifetime. Can you explain to our listeners about FAST? I can. I can't. I would love to get it's that It's an acronym, the right? F-A-S-T. Um, it is. So if you think of someone as having a stroke, look for, think of the word FAST. So FAST stands for Face drooping. A stands for arm. So can you lift your arm or could they lift their arm? Ask them to do that. S stands for speech. So you want to look for that slurred speech. They have any symptom of that. And then T is probably most important and that stands for time. Because the quicker you can get someone to the hospital or get medical attention to them, you can save their life. And you could also keep them from having some disabilities. Um, so there's now a wonderful drug called TPA. If you can get folks to the hospital within the first 90 minutes, that could typically be administered. And there's great success rates um, in reducing any effects from stroke if you're able to get that in time. Bev, I want to uh, enclose it. I know you're limited on your time today. We talked about some of the challenges with the pandemic with charities. And I think it's so critically important. I do not want to see Congress change the in any way, the benefits of charitable contributions. You know, uh, now we can get involved a lot of ways. We can get involved with our time and with our money. But, you know, our Internal Revenue Code is, in a, is written kind of with an observation that charities can be more efficient with serving people than the federal government can with the dollars. And, you know, I don't want the, the, our, the Congress to change any of the implications in the code of the value of charitable dedu- giving and charitable deductions. You know, there are more and more things people can do. If you're 70 and a half and older, you can do qualified charitable distributions from your IRA directly to charity. Now, you can only do that from an IRA. You cannot do that from any other type of a retirement account. But there are so many things people can do. But So can, can you just touch briefly on how people can learn more about the American Heart Association and how they can support, whether it's money or time or whatever? Yes. Yeah, so um, we can't do what we do without the money at the end of the day. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, we have a really easy website that is probably the most convenient way. So it's www.heart.org. We also have local social media platforms that we keep up to date with any local initiatives that are going on. And and just as you said, we love to have volunteers. It takes a lot of hands on deck to get these events up and going. It takes a lot of folks in the community to get the word spread. And then there's also a giving platform on those as well. That's great. And I know at Broken Financial, we're looking to become more involved with the American Heart Association. You know, I know is serving, uh, you know, people as they approach retirement and then into retirement. You know, obviously we have a lot of clients that are trying to stay heart healthy. So it's a cause that we really firmly believe in at Brogan Financial. I, you've heard, many of you have heard me on the radio talk about giving as part of a financial plan and how important that is. So the American Art Association is one of many, many great options in the Knoxville community. So, Bev, thank you so much for being with us. Bev Miller from the American Heart Association. Thanks thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. That's Bev Miller. We've uh, So far, we've talked about our health. We've talked about health and fitness with Andrew Henderson from Fitness Together. We've talked about heart health with the American Heart Association. Jill Wolverton is with me this morning. She is my producer and also my director of marketing and communications over at Brogan Financial and kind of our in-house health and fitness guru. When we come back, we're going to have an extended dollars and cents segment. When we talk about your financial health, what are the three things in 2021 you need to start doing to get your financial health in order. So stay with us as you're listening to More Living with Jim Brogan here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. 
Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. This is More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. We're on the air every Saturday at 9 a.m. and again at 3 p.m. if you didn't catch all of the show. You can also listen to our podcasts uh, on the online at my website, broganfinancial.com. You can hear our uh, entire show and our dollars and cents segments. Today, up until now, we've been talking about our physical health as we've had on uh, we had Jill Wolverton, my producer. She guest hosted with me this morning. And uh, we've had on Andrew Henderson from Fitness Together and then Bev Miller with the American Heart Association. We're now going to talk about your financial health and three things you can be doing in 2021 to get your financial financial health in order. So it is time for dollars and cents. Want to be sure you are getting the most out of your retirement? all the years of your retirement? That's the primary goal of More Living with Jim Brogan and our Dollars and Cents segment, where we provide you with an important financial tip that will help positively impact the quality of your life in retirement. And now, here's Jim with this week's Dollars and Cents tip. Three financial tips for 2021. What do you need to be aware of? I've had a lot of people ask me, Jim, the market is at all-time, near all-time highs. It certainly pulled back some this past week. Should I sell? What should I be doing with my investments? So tip number one is measure and assess your risk tolerance. And that's critically important. Uh, You know, you need to understand the risk in your portfolio. Many of you may not have rebalanced your investments for quite some time. You know, how long has it been since you really did that? Plus, with the surge in stock, you know, funds and and the stock market over the last several years, uh, you know, you've also been aging. So if you're not already retired, you're closer to retirement. And preserving the early years of income become more critically important when you're approaching retirement and entering into retirement. So if you haven't looked at rebalancing and measuring the risk in your portfolio in a while, you may find that you are way too aggressive. Now, at the same point, we don't know what markets are going to do in the short term. We know that in the long term, we're going to have bull markets and we're going to have bear markets. In the long term, the stock market is a good place to invest if we take an appropriate amount of risk. But trying to time when the bull market will happen and when the bear market will happen is really folly in my opinion. I mean, it's just not going to be successful long term. But measure the risk in your portfolio so you know if we had or when we have the next bear market, whether it's this year or next year or in three or four years, how would you expect your investments to perform? Believe it or not, measuring past risk in a portfolio, measuring the historic data in your current portfolio can actually be a pretty good predictor of future risk. So you can have a pretty good understanding. I mean, we can't predict the future, but we can have a pretty good idea for how a portfolio is likely to behave in a both a boom and a bust. So measure that risk and make sure it's appropriate for you. Now, number two is secure your cash needs for the next five years minimum. Now, if you're close to retirement or retired, or retired, then that would mean income planning. You know, securing your income. Your monies that you need in the next five years, for you younger folks, it might be an emergency fund. It might be saving up money to buy a house. It could be any of these things. But you should not have that money in the stock market. You know, if you ask me, Jim, where's the stock market going to be in two years? I mean, I don't know. Nobody does. You know, the shorter term, the forecast, the more it's a guess. If somebody says the markets are going to crash in the next 90 days, all right, that's a, such a short-term forecast. That's a guess. That, that to me, says more about the person making that prediction than it does the prediction itself. So, you know, if you need money next year, in two years, you know, you're going to buy a car or a house or you're going to retire and you need income. You know, monies you need in the next five years, 
should not be invested in the stock market, frankly. So then if your market investments are invested now for a longer-term view, you don't need that money for income in the next five years minimum. And, and I, it would be ideal to be covered for the next seven or eight years. But then you're not as worried about when is the next bear market. Because there are going to be bear markets, but there's also going to be bull markets. You know, I just saw a, a flash across my feed this morning from Warren Buffett. He's bullish on the U.S., now, he could be wrong. Warren Buffett's not always right. Very smart man, a lot smarter than I am. But, you know, when it comes to predicting the future, nobody's always right. But he could be right, too. And if the market does surge and you're worried about the stock market and you're trying to time that, you could really miss out. Okay? And then my third tip is invest your money. Let me, let me phrase that another way. Develop your financial plan to achieve specific outcomes. You know, it, 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 we don't invest just to make money. I, I mean, we all want to make money, but we want to, you know, there are risks to investing. There are risks to being successful financially. So you want to invest for specific outcomes, and that becomes more and more important when you get closer to retirement and retired because you're investing to achieve something specific. For you younger folks, if you're investing for college, to pay for college for kids, that's something specific. And as you get closer to your kids going to college, you've got to be diligent about how you handle the investments because they're becoming more and more short-term oriented, and you don't want to be as a, a riverboat gambler. So we, we really want to develop a financial plan with specific goals in mind, and then we want to develop that plan around achieving those goals. What financial plan gives you the greatest likelihood of achieving your, goal, your goals? So that's what it's all about. So those are my three tips. Now, I do want to mention I'm having an online webinar. It is complimentary for those of you that listen to News Talk 98.7. It is this Thursday. It's a 30-minute webinar, five steps to a successful retirement plan in 2021 and beyond. So I'm going to cover five key areas that you need to address in this evolving world that we're looking at. What are, th what are the challenges and risks going forward in this economy? What are the opportunities? And how do you need to be handling your financial plan? Again, it is a complimentary virtual webinar. I'll be doing it through Zoom. It is me that's doing it. And I'll be presenting for about 25 minutes, and then we'll do some Q&A through the chat feature. Uh, Jill, who you heard on the on the help co-host this morning, uh, she'll be on there with me, helping me run the the, the presentation. So uh, I'm just, you know, for those of you that now my classes, you know, when I do two two hour sessions, those are so meaty. The idea behind this webinar is number one, it's complimentary, but number two, in a thirty minute overview, I'm going to hit the major highlights that you need to be aware of in 2021. What is this government spending? How is it likely to affect us? What is the economic reality we face? over the next five to ten years? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it choppy? What do you need to be doing to secure your future? So go to broganfinancial.com, click on webinars, and you can register for this complimentary webinar. Again, it's this Thursday, 7 to 7.30. Go to broganfinancial.com and click on webinars. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, Jill, for not only producing the show but co-hosting with me. Thank you, Andrew Henderson with Fitness Together and Bev Miller with the American Heart Association. You've been listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. Your health is so important, both your physical health and your financial health, so you can live the best years of your life your way. Thanks for tuning in. This is More Living here on News Talk 98.7. Thank you, Chris, running the board right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. The views expressed by Jim Brogan and his guests are not that of Cumulus Media. Any discussion of financial, legal, and tax planning strategies is not intended to be individualized advice and is general in nature. Always consult with your advisor for advice specific to your needs. This program's content does not represent a recommendation of any particular security, strategy, or investment by Jim Brogan or Brogan Financial Incorporated.